Hello everyone. It is not a pleasant experience to witness your food spoil after all of the effort you had put into making that food. And for those of us who don't cook, after all of the hard-earned money you had spent buying that food, it is not a pleasant experience. It is quite frustrating. To think that in some households, food spoilage is a frequent occurrence and they are yet to figure out how to deal with it. And so in this video, we are going to be dwelling on food spoilage. We are going to look at the causes of food spoilage and how to deal with it so that you don't go about wasting your very precious food. So stay tuned, don't go anywhere, we will be right back. So food spoilage is caused by a number of factors, but the most important one is microbial growth. In fact, every other factor that contributes to the spoilage of food is linked to microorganisms or microbial growth. For those of us who do not know, microorganisms like bacteria and mold are present everywhere, including on our food. When conditions are favorable, these microorganisms can multiply rapidly and cause spoilage of food. There are a number of factors that can and influence microbial growth and these include temperature, moisture, pH levels and even nutrient availability. Now we're going to dwell on these factors one after the other. Like I said before, these factors are in one way or another linked to microorganisms or microbial growth. So let's talk about temperature. Temperature plays a very significant role in food spoilage. This is because most microorganisms grow rapidly in the temperature danger zone, which is between 4 degrees Celsius and about 40 or 50 degrees Celsius. And it is because of temperature that we have today refrigerators and freezers. But then, what is the role of refrigeration or freezing in preservation of food or in controlling temperature as a cause of food spoilage? The point here is that, or something we need to note is that refrigeration slows down microbial growth while freezing stops it altogether. However, there are some microorganisms that can still survive freezing. Another important cause of food spoilage is moisture. Moisture content affects the growth of microorganisms. High moisture levels create an ideal environment for microbial growth, making certain foods more susceptible to spoilage. In fact, I'm sure we can relate with this better. If you get a fresh fish and a dry stock fish, for example, it is common sense that if you leave them for two or three days, the fresh fish will get spoiled first. The reason is because the fresh fish has got more water content or moisture content than the stock fish. And so because of the presence of water in the fresh fish, an ideal environment has been created for microorganisms to survive or thrive better and that is why it's important for fruits and vegetables with high water content to be stored properly in order to prevent them from spoiling. Another important cause of food spoilage is exposure to oxygen. We all know that oxygen is one of the important substances that living things require to stay alive and microorganisms are of course living things. Oxygen is needed for every living thing to stay active. So oxygen can actually promote the growth of spoilage microorganisms like bacteria and mold and it does so by energizing them and providing them with the strength that they need to survive. Meanwhile, reactions involving oxygen, which is called oxidation, can also lead to off flavors, discoloration, and texture changes in certain foods. And that is why vacuum packaging or storing food in airtight containers can help slow down spoilage. Another cause of food spoilage is enzymatic reactions. Enzymes are naturally occurring substances in foods that can cause spoilage. Enzymes are responsible for various biochemical processes like ripening, browning, and deterioration of texture. In fact, temperature and pH levels can influence enzymatic reactions. So if you're able to affect the temperature and pH levels of food substances, then the activity of the enzymes can also be tampered with. And that is why heat treatment or proper storage can help inhibit enzyme activity. Let's talk about cross-contamination as also one of the causes. In cross-contamination, we have harmful microorganisms being transferred from one food to another. Now, this can happen through improper handling, using contaminated utensils, or storing raw and cooked foods together. Sometimes we make this very common mistake of combining cooked food and raw ones, forgetting that the raw ones have abundance of microorganisms in them. 
So besides causing the food to spoil, cross-contamination can actually lead to foodborne illnesses. Another important cause of food spoilage is inadequate preservation methods. Improper preservation techniques such as inadequate canning, bottling, or drying can create conditions for spoilage microorganisms to thrive. Insufficient heat processing or improper sealing can also allow the entry of spoilage microorganisms. But having said all of this, it is important to note that not all food spoilage is immediately harmful or can result in foodborne illnesses. However, spoiled food may be unappetizing, have an unpleasant odor, or can even pose health risks if consumed. Now, to minimize food spoilage, it is crucial to handle, store, and preserve food properly, following recommended guidelines and maintaining hygienic practices. Thank you very much for watching. So guys, if you have more information to share about food spoilage or how food spoilage can be better prevented, please hit the comment section and share your opinions there and I will greatly appreciate that. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, kindly do that now. Don't also forget to click the like button, click on the notification bell so that the next time I post a video here, you'll be the first to see it. Until we see in our next video, bye for now.